is for all you multi-talented, multitasking, multi-everything people out there. Take it away. Find your glory, write your story, fearless we will carry you. Time you own it, take your moment, be a fire burning through. Hustling from night until morning, grinding it out, it won't be long. Feel your power, it's your hour, you inspire, you are strong. Enjoy your Zoa. No applause. <laughs> You're all fired. <laughs> now that you've reached the stage in your life where quality television is important, Nubian TV is a black network that speaks to your lifestyle. Nubian TV is the world's first digital network devoted to the upscale and political lifestyles of black people. Nubian TV's programming includes politics, travel, fashion, food, automotive, arts and culture, civil rights, music, and more. Watch now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, or watch globally at NubianTV.net. Nubian TV, it's what you want to watch. Now that you've... Caesar. Just look at him. Politician, general, author, ruler, man. Legend has it, he's not only stared into the belly of the beast, he's had it for dinner. Here he's free to relax, or party, or relax, or party, or relax, and party. His is a world of opulence. And the occasional impulse buy. Not one to rest on his laurels, he's famous for ushering in a new age of entertainment. So, for anyone seeking a place where the sun never sets on a good time, all this awaits. I am Caesar, and I approve this palace. Hey, 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 everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome into an edition of Brayley's Virtual Tour Live. Y'all, I was so not out after that Ray to Love um, live stream that we did today. It was a great show, but I was completely knocked out. I should have set for 10, but yeah, I overslept. <laughs> I was talking to um, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. I uh, saw so him like, oh, Lord, hang on, y'all. So I'm sorry for oversleeping. But, you know, then again, maybe I might need it, the extra sleep. So, <laughs> But, hey, it's all, I hope all is forgiven. I think I'm probably not the first person that has overslept a live on YouTube, okay? We are all human. <laughs> This is just like when I <laughs> when I fell asleep on Fridays live because I did three shows in one day. I've been doing that for six Fridays, so please forgive me. But let's do what we do. Higher is waiting, low is available. But either way, we are live on tour. Let me take down this iconic intro. Lord help me, child. You see the virtual tour background, hear the virtual tour music, and then there is me. Hey, everybody, welcome in. Glad to have y'all here. So I don't know who's going to show up or not, but 
we are here and i'm glad to have y'all here so i want to do this breakdown because of fairness right and a lot of times in the world of media things can be a little complicated um, to use uncle wanda's speech or complicated for the rest of us so y'all know monopoly is one of the greatest board games ever but what do you do when this happens right so margot robbie lucky chap to produce monopoly movie following barbie success from barbie land to uh, Baltic avenue so this barbie continues to roll the dice with film adaptations margot robbie has boarded lionsgate's monopoly film as a producer the ceo announced the partnership with Robbie's award-winning production company, Lucky Chap, co-formed with husband Tom Eggery and Joey Narwar at Cinecon on Wednesday, Hasbro Entertainment will produce. The film has been guesting for quite some time now at the at the at beginning at Universal Pictures with directly Ridley what with direct, director Ridley Scott. Yes attached um, back in 2008 Lionsgate picked up the project in 2015 later tapping um, director Tim Story Kevin Hart to bring the story to fruition the pilot is said to follow a boy from the game's boss uh, Baltic Avenue and his quest to make a fortune story confirmed last summer the movie was, was still very much in development conceding to slash film that working out the pilot had been a challenge it's a difficult one to find the right thing with this is monopoly this is true but i also have a feeling that there's a way to do it i know how i would do the monopoly movie I ain't gonna give that out because that's free money for Hasbro unless y'all try to find me and then we make it happen from there. Um, and then of course with money, finance movies are are not easy to make entertaining. So there's a lot going on here. The ball keeps moving. Or should I say the basket keeps getting moved? So fingers crossed. Lucky Chap recently struck box office and Oscars goal with Greta Gerwig, Barbie starring Robbie in the title and role. Monopoly is a top property, pun fully intended, said Lucky Cap in a Lucky Chap in a statement like all the best intellectual property this game has resonated worldwide for generations. And we are so excited to bring this game to life along with the wonderful teams involved at last game at Hasbro. Robbie's production company also recently drawn the Sims movie adaptation, partnering with low-key director Kate Harmon. So Here is exclusive right here by Kevin Hart. This comes us from Slash Film Sandy Schaefer. Remember in the early 2010s when board game movies were going to be the next big thing in Hollywood? It seemed like Peter Berg and Michael Bay's Riff Battleship, a supremely silly film that I <laughs> that I have fun with, I won't lie. I put, I put the kibosh on that when it bombed at the box office in 2012 yet a few months later after its release there were new reports of Hasbro moving forward films based on monopoly and hungry hungry hippos neither one of those have come to fruition at the time of writing this although i kind of want to still see that hippos would be per- hippo movie personally as for monopoly a film adaptation of the classic board game you know the one that makes unquenchable capitalistic greed fun for the whole family actually predicates battleship or precedes battleship all the way back to 2008 the early iteration had none other than sir Ripley scott attached to direct the filmmaker saying circa 2010 i just want to make a movie about the idea of greed i told them you know the game can turn your sweetest dearest art into a demon a nightmare of greed it sounds like this was shaped up to be scott's answer to financial movies like Wall Street or Wolf of Wall Street, and I for one would love to check that out. Alas, that version has been fallen by the wayside. More recently in 2010, Tim Story came on to board 
to came on board right to direct his Ryan Long star Kevin Hart and Monopoly movie that had previous script drafted by a young man from the game's modest, modest Baltic Avenue on a quest to make a fortune. Turns out that iteration is still trading along as slash film Ryan Scott learned while interviewing a story about his upcoming um, horror comedy, The Blackening. So what would Monopoly movie even look like? Creatively speaking, the biggest challenge presented by board game movies is that their source material tends to be inherently plotless. And even when it does lend itself to the big screen, it's usually the form of a generic film. That's why Battleship decided to throw, of all things, except a space alien invasion into a property that's about an old-fashioned um, naval warfare as a way of attempting to spice things up. Similarly, there's another abandoned iteration of of the Monopoly movie that then producer Randall Emmerich had described as a treasure hunting family adventure in the Van Goonies. According to Tim's story, it's been especially hard finding the right cinematic hook for his take on Monopoly. The filmmaker confirmed that the film is still in development when right when Ryan asked, it's a difficult one to find the right thing with story as we've been talking to writers. It's something still being developed. Hopefully we get a blueprint that we can get some kind of so that we can get kind so we can get so that we can kind of get something made rather. When Ryan asked what Monopoly would even look like as a cinema experience, story it made your guess is as good as his. Trust me, I wish I could tell you that's been a problem. It really is one of those ideas where you can go so many places with it, different places with it. And then, of course, with money, finance, movies are not easy to make entertaining. So there's a lot going on there. The ball keeps being moved. Or should I say the basket keeps being moved? So, so fingers crossed. Hopefully, trust me, one day um, I hope I can articulate exactly what it might be. So, so it's interesting because you know I feel that Monopoly, yes, is a big deal. It's a big franchise, but also too, if you're going to do Monopoly right, it needs to be a big family adventure. It needs to be a big family adventure. And if we look at Monopoly, so let's look at the Monopoly board. Oh, excuse me, y'all. Uh, and I said, I am so, so sorry, y'all. I was completely knocked the hell out. So please forgive me. Don't charge it to my head, not my heart. Let me do this. Open up image a new tab. All right, so here's this here, right? So you got all these different streets here of Monopoly, right? So usually you got the brown ones first, then the green ones. Actually, let me see if we can find a regular negative schmeck. So that's the one we're going to need. That's a little, that's a little much. Okay. So here it is here. Baltic Avenue right here. $60 It's the cheapest property, right? So I'm guessing the movie would be from going to here to get to Boardwalk, right? It needs to be a family film. You don't want to be so adult that the kids don't get what's going on. And you don't want to be so kiddish that the adults don't know what's going on, right? So to me, I feel like it should maybe be maybe 
Mr. Monopoly is telling his grandkids um, about a story about how Monopoly City came to be and how, you know, what you do good and bad has consequences, right? And so maybe the city is in trouble, right? So there's like some kids or there could be four adults, right? You can and listen, this is what I would do, right? So you have a kid that lived from Baltic Avenue all the way to this street, right? Then you have one kid who lived in this neighborhood. Then you have another kid that lived in this neighborhood. Then you have another kid that lived in this neighborhood, right? Four best friends, right? And they all have lived in different places, different lives, have families and stuff. And they come back to the city. And there is an entity that wants to take out Monopoly City. Right? So now it's up to them to save Monopoly City from being gentrified. Maybe that's the way you could play it. You know what I mean? Because it, it's it has to be a very relatable story. So that's just my take on it. Okay. So I could be wrong. So Ridley Scott had a Monopoly movie, right? And it says here um, from Giant Robot, creating movies based on um, books, comics, or even video games makes sense. But now in the era of movies based on choice, I did the success of Barbie. Mattel has created a pipeline of other toy-based um, movies, including um, movies based on Hot Wheels, Magic 8-Ball, Uno, now Hasbro's jumping on the bandwagon. The board company hired Ridley Scott to write a movie based on Monopoly, and what the Gladiator director came up with is a script following a 45-type character in a movie with the comedic tone of an Eddie Murphy eight, um, 80s film. So, Ridley Scott, who was known, who is known for his iconic action and sci-fi work such as Blade Runner, Gladiator, shed it recently shed light on the intriguing direction he's chosen for the Monopoly adaptation. Like me and us, Scott explained how he initially felt perplexity when he heard that there would be a movie based on the board game. After accepting the project, the renowned director was left with the challenge of figuring out exactly how he would end integrate the game's iconic elements into a movie fit for our audience somehow i have to integrate the game do i have to show the game with people running around on a board with large houses and funny top hats and that sort of thing he amused we had a hard time initially because my head led me down the route of saying somehow i have to integrate the game da, da, da. oh yeah surprisingly hasbro reassured really sky that that wasn't what they're looking for in the monopoly movie they just wanted a movie there were a thousand different directions that really sky could have taken when crafting the monopoly plot he decided to take the comedic route the american gangster director explained that the film will wrap would revolve around a character reminiscent of 45 and his interaction with equally ruthless um, real estate tycoons it's about greed greed becomes hopefully hysterically funny Ridley Scott's Monopoly movie is expected to unfold in the competitive nature of the competitive, uh, the competitive nature world of high stakes real estate dealings it promises a satirical take on the pursuit of wealth ironic coming from the guy who's estimating that worth is around 400 million dollars to justify his creative choice, Ridley Scott drew a parallel between the Monopoly board and his bird eye view of Central Park at night. You know, if you ever have looked above Central Park at night and the helicopter you look down below, when you're right in the middle of a park, it looks like a giant, it looks like a Monopoly board. It's green, it's lit, it's the most expensive real estate um, in the world around the edges, and that's where we'll start. So what kind of so what kind of comedy are we talking about? According to Ridley Scott, the Monopoly movie takes inspiration from classic comedies like Eddie Murphy's Trading Places, clarifying we'll copy that from exactly though. Um, Scott said, I'm not saying it's like that, but somewhere around that route. <clears throat> like I said, it's 
is difficult because you don't want it to be. If I'm too into the Monopoly movie, I expect to see every street of Monopoly in the film, right? I don't expect to not see that one street. Like I said, if I would now the now the film that I have is of that that you got these four young men or you know what two men two women so two men live from th this neighborhood here and then two women live from this neighborhood here and they all go off outside monopoly city they all come back you know for the um you know uh, monopoly city you know um birthday celebration i guess the day of the founding of the city whatever the hell you make it up and they hear that monopoly city is actually crashing down and so these four you know people have to fight against this entity that wants to gentrify you know monopoly city that's my thing but there's another plot that i have that i think will be a little bit deeper than that it has something to do with these dice but I'll leave that be. I will leave that be. And it says right here, it's un and this comes to us from Variety.com. It's unclear how Robbie and company would plan to spin narrative story from the two-dimensional world of Monopoly, who will portray its mascot, Rich Uncle Money. Rich Uncle Pennybags from Mr. Monopoly. Will they pass? Go with they collect two hundred dollars. Um, like I said, they could make Barbie that big. I think they could figure out a way to do it without sharing any details. Lionsgate motion picture group chair Adam Fox hinted that Lucky Chap has a clear point of has a clear point of view on the upcoming Monopoly movie. He made the announcement during Cinecon. The annual movie theater trade show that's currently taking place in Las Vegas. A uh, Pat House Cinema owners in the Coliseum at Caesars Palace ch cheer loudly at the news. So James Myers is overseeing Monopoly on behalf of the studio. Robert Mick um, led the studio deal making. So, like I said, we'll see. Now, I don't know what Kevin Hart has to say about all this because, like I said, he was supposed to star in the movie um, and director um, Tim Story was supposed to be a part of this movie. So, so that's why I said, who, who, whose movie is it? Is it Margot Robbie and her partners, Tom Aiki, Akari, and Josie Nara, or is it Kevin so that's what we're going to do. And if you guys are wondering, wait a minute, is Mattel Hasbro and then it, sorry, is Barbie is Barbie Mattel and then is Hasbro Monopoly? Yes. So she will not be doing this um, with Mattel. Hey, Lynette Stiller, welcome and glad to have you here. And I'm sorry, y'all, for oversleeping. I am. Um, because I was like, wait a minute, what is going on? And I'm like, oh, damn, it's 10 o'clock. So please forgive me, y'all. I was, uh, child. Anyway, it is all good. It is all good. Whew. Goodness, sorry. And like I said, it's no confirmed news yet on its cast, its crew release date or plot so we shall see um, see Tim story under Tim story is over doing
I'm just the only thing down here, honestly. That's not the one I'm looking for. That's the motivational speaker. So Tim's story is not on LinkedIn. That's interesting. Because LinkedIn is basically, I got to put this, LinkedIn is the professional version of Facebook. So I'm surprised that he's not on LinkedIn. But anyway, into a, into a, into a, into a, into a. So what do y'all think about that? Would y'all watch Monopoly movie at all or? I mean, I definitely would if it's done right, but like I said, it's Monopoly, so you got to figure out a way to take, first of all, you got to figure out if Kevin Hart is going to be in the cast still because that was announced, or is Margot Robbie going to be a part of it, and then once we figure out who's the director and stuff like that, then it's the story, and I think that's where they're doing it because like, if you try to take Monopoly where, you know, people are going to be in the video game. Hey, Cheryl H. Tough, welcome in. Glad to have you here. If you try to fig- if you try to take people from the real world to the video game, well, Jumanji has already done that, right? And Jumanji is a whole entity by itself. So you can't do Monopoly into the video game world. That makes no sense. You can do, you can do live action. But it has to make sense, though. And then again, if you do an anime movie, your world is unlimited, right? But it seems like they want to do a live action film. So that is going to be the key. How are you going to take Monopoly, this iconic, iconic, iconic um, show, or this iconic um, game, and make it into something that's going to make sense to everybody? So, I'm so sorry. So, 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 so sorry. So, yeah. So I had some other links too, but I just put those links in there. Just that way you guys can know and should know that this has been in the works for a while now. But yeah, when I saw this, I was just like, wait a minute, so Kevin Hart? (laughs) So Kevin Hart is not in this thing at all? Like, what's going on? And trust me, even though I, mm, Kevin Hart and Monopoly, I just don't see it. I'm sorry. Now, I can see more Chestnut in Monopoly, maybe, because it's the thing, like, Kevin Hart, he, he's one-dimensional in his movie roles. He doesn't really have any range to him. Like, he's basically the sidekick. And there's nothing wrong with being the sidekick. Nothing wrong with it at all. Nothing wrong with being a sidekick at all, man. You, you make a lot of money at being the sidekick, right? So... I don't know. I just don't know, really. But yeah, we're gonna take a little bit of a commercial breaky, and um, right at the same minute, we're gonna take a little bit of commercial break, and then we come back with more virtual tour live right after this. Thank you all for being so so understanding. Yes, I was supposed to start at nine, but child, I overslept. I was not the out. Um, but also too, I have never not given y'all a show either. So um, I'm like, hey, listen, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it do what it do for sure. So love y'all, value y'all, appreciate y'all. 
um, as well. So hopefully your Saturday night is going good. We'll be back right after this. Roll it. I got a question for you. What does this city know about luxury? Huh? What does a town that's been to hell and back know about the finer things in life? Well, I'll tell you, more than most. You see, it's the hottest fires that make the hardest steel. Add hard work and conviction and the know-how that runs generations deep in every last one of us. That's who we are. That's our story. Now, it's probably not the one you've been reading in papers, the one being written by folks who've never even been here and don't know what we're capable of. Because when it comes to luxury, it's as much about where it's from as who it's for. Now, we're from America, but this isn't New York City, or the Windy City, or Sin City, and we're certainly no one's Emerald City. City. And this is what we do. I finally did it. Popeye's new chicken sandwich. Mm. I've been trying to make the perfect chicken sandwich forever. Um, how does that make you feel? You know me. It had to be just right. Mm -hmm. Finding a bun as good mm. as my chicken was not easy. Mm. I mean, I did it, obviously. I think we've made a lot of progress here. I feel great. Good talk. Mmm. I'm proud of you. My new chicken sandwich is buttermilk battered and served on toasted brioche. Try it in spicy or classic. Love that chicken from Popeye. I finally did it. Copeland's is not just some fancy place for your big night out. In fact, there's no occasion too big. Or if you like, too small. Copeland's. There's always something good. I'm loving y'all right back. Welcome back into Brain Lee's virtual tour live. Glad to have all you here. So for those of you who may not know who Tim Story is, here is a little bit of his resume. He directed Taxi, Barbershop, Fantastic Four, Kevin Hart, Laugh at My Pain, Hurricane Season, um, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, Think Like a Man, mm -hmm, with Will Packer. Yes, let me explain. Ride Along with Kevin Hart and Ice Cube, Think Like a Man 2, What Now? Right along to Shaft and of course the Tom and Jerry movie. Now, a lot of people had their feelings about this, but let me play the video for y'all because this was actually really good. Here we go. So he directed that great film. 
Um, and honestly, some people was like, eh, I don't know, but he actually did a really good job to me. Now, Tom and Jerry, that that's my heart. So if you mess up Tom and Jerry, we we ain't cool. So um, I do feel like um, a Tim story directed um, directed Monopoly. I think he would do a great great job. And you know what? Honestly, tell you the truth, if we go back to now, look, if this gets cut out, just know. I had to cut it out because I got because I got a whole email today from YouTube saying I had to come out, cut out um, Temptation Island. Um, I'm just like so really other people can bully and do the most on YouTube, but yeah, I try to promote the show and I got cut out. Okay, but if we go back here and you see the art style of how they were able to blend Jerry into the actual world there. See what I mean? And then how they were able to get Jerry. So imagine that art style of Mr. Monopoly in the real world, along with that cast. In a way, they could make it work. That's one art style that they could do, right? So, but yeah, that is Tim's story there. Then of course, he's done some TV as well standoff um cb csi miami super ninjas on nickelodeon um scorpion um white white famous and then of course queens on abc so and they did some music videos as well a lot of music videos are you still down johnny b sweet lady i didn't know he did sweet lady um with tyrese um independence day too short i'll be around um rasan what my side cheers to you play and take your time Pete rock i do watch what you say boo john b cool relax remix version john b lee gray jenny fellow i'm screen hardeman remember when color me bad lately have i told you i loved you lately um i drive myself crazy in sing cray mark darcy Tell me it's real, Casey and JoJo. He can't love you, Jack and Edge. Get gone, ideal. Um, ideal U.S. Creep in the best man I can be. Genuine R.L. Tyrese and Case. We Cherokee. You feel so good, so unique. Ride or die, chick. Locks. Drag on the Eve. Locks. Wild out. Wants my shush. Always my shush. Sam Salter. L.V. How long? Let's get married. Jagged Edge. Why you want to keep being from me, baby guy? Mr. Too Damn Good, Gerald Levert, the legendary Gerald Levert, Sugar Don Phillip, Shari got her eyes on me, Darnell Phillips, before Dark Monica, Love Me Now, Beanie Man, Masquerade, Toshi Kuba, um, Brown Skin, you know about that brown, brown skin, um, Hard Queens, Brandy, Nadine Vasquez. Vasquez, Eve, Tori Nine, Camera, and the Nasty Girl Queen. So, um, he, he's he's been in the game for a good while now. He's been in the game for a good while now. So, so yes, indeed. I probably won't stay on too too long, y'all. I want to um, want to come on to um, honor my commitment. Um, you know what I mean? I sincerely apologize. I really did oversleep. Um, you know what I mean? So. Sorry, I just <laughs> just saw something there from um, on Instagram. Sorry, um. but yes, indeed. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say what day. What's going on, Tay? Mm. 
Mm. My Lord. So, but yep, just wanted to break down the Monopoly movie for you guys just a little bit. So, in case you guys do see any more updates, yes, Kevin Hart was attached to star in it, and Tim Story was attached to direct it. So, just give y'all a little bit of a breakdown. Like I said, I probably won't be all wrong. Just wanted to give y'all um, a little context there, so. <laughs> Let me show y'all this. This is funny. This is funny. I love stuff like this. This is funny. up for y'all because this is funny here i guess that life can be funny sometimes can it because i literally just saw this on <laughs> I think it's this one. Oh yeah, it is this one. Okay. Y'all look at this. This is funny. You're at Walt Disney World Resort and Goofy just wants to watch some cartoons. So <laughs> is utterly hilarious that is utterly hilarious it was the fact of goofy going to the tv to sit down and put his hat in his own little chair <laughs> just like we would all do on a saturday morning <laughs> Oh, my Lord Jesus. You know, it is the um, it is the little things in life, right? 31,257 likes. Oh, my Lord Jesus. And that the hat comes off. Since when? And the fact that that kid got to watch cartoons with Goofy. Um, you know what I mean? That is... Uh, I love how everybody's just so perplexed. Like the hat comes off, it's a hat. And that he is it says here he got better married than others. Watch your movie, take it his half in case someone behind him is trying to watch. And look at that little girl watching the movies there. Imagine um the WTF dude's boss on that Zoom call is like, did Goofy just walk behind you? <laughs> He's not watching cartoons. He's watching replays of his college years. <laughs> so there you go. Just a little funny to make y'all day a little bit uh, easier, a little bit lighter and brighter. So I love doing stuff like that for y'all. I really do. Oh, my Lord. Oh. 
Well, like I said, as soon as this thing gets to an hour, I'll probably go right back to sleep, y'all. I didn't want to hold you long. Did not want to hold you alone at all. Mm. Hey, hey, welcome in. I'm just chilling. I uh, meant to go live at nine and child, I was so knocked out. <laughs> I mean, let me tell y'all something. When I am knocked out, I'm completely knocked out. So when y'all heard me on Friday night show, just, I don't know how it sounded to y'all, but I was completely knocked out. I, when I, when, if we ever, if we ever like do a road trip or something, if I'm not out, I am not out. Okay, but um, but yeah, I was just tired, y'all. Cause that live we were on for what, like maybe two, three hours, and usually I'm fine and I'll wake right back up and stuff. But y'all, I was just not out today. I really was. But I'm glad I got to come on and do this live with y'all, just to kind of give y'all some intel, some information, y'all. Um. Because information is important, you know, it really is. So, but yeah, not too much else, y'all, with this. And um, so, yeah, I found this. I thought this was quite, quite hilarious. Um, so, but, yep. We thank you, everybody um, who said that. Thank you so much. Um, Lori Bell Carr, thank you. Tyler Timon G. Molly, your showers network in the night still. And, um, I know Angela um, Hall was going to come through, or she said she wanted to. And everybody who would have came through at night, I appreciate y'all. But yes, I overslept out. I'll, I'll admit it. But I'm probably not the first person that overslept over me, too. <laughs> and, um, and and miss you and miss doing a live so i'm probably not the first person so mm, my lord But yes, he is. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Hmm. Let's see if they're going to be a takeout today. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't know if y'all know, but apparently Fallon is trying to threaten Portia now about you know if you if she sees Portia that's not gonna be a good thing you know I mean Fallon at this point child listen you know I get what you're saying because what Portia did was not cool um you know what I mean so the former reality star warns if she ever runs into Portia there's gonna be any talking so here's this here are you shocked to find out when Portia and Simon separated? No, was anybody? Do you think that was real? No. The whole relationship you don't think was real? You don't think it was real at all? No, I think it was just a point hey, to get back at me. So let me ask you this. If you if you ever ran into Portia, what would you talk to her about? That wouldn't be a safe scenario. Oh, oh. Why? They smoke? For her or they smoke. But... I mean, at the end of the day, she knows what she did. It, 
it could play out in the media however everybody wants to try to play it out i know what she did simon knows what she did Portia knows what she did that wouldn't be a safe scenario so i wouldn't even put myself in a predicament of even allowing that you know i'm a grown woman now oh to talk to her talk to her ain't gonna be no talking well she said what she said <laughs> ain't gonna be no talking um you know like i said i agree with fallon on it but also too Fallon, you also had a child as well you know on the outside with the Simon. so i mean you know fair is fair you know but i i, I get why she feels the way that she feels and listen um portia is getting told i told you so and then in a boo -boo and laughed in her face so you know it is what it is you know what i mean so but yeah we'll we'll see what happens that's that real housewives of atlanta should be a very interesting season 16. that's all i will say so we shall see Charles. Hopefully your Saturday night has gone well. Hopefully it has gone well. Sorry, I was just looking at some stuff on Facebook too. It's just, child, people's mindsets never cease to amaze me, y'all. And honestly, too, I've been saying it, but I think that reality TV is about to get a reckoning. I really do. I think reality TV is about to get a whole reset out here in these streets, and I think it's about time. So we shall see. Um, we shall see what ends up happening. Like I said, hopefully, y'all, uh, um, the rest of April will be good because I think we're we're almost halfway done. You know what I mean? And like I said, May fifth, will, May fourth will be here before you know it for um, for Love and Marriage Chance. But like I said, I really do believe um, it will be the final season for the show. I just have this feeling. I really do. I really do. I, I don't know what it is, but just to me, with everything happening on social media, especially with Love and Marriage DC, I feel like Love and Marriage DC is going to be canceled very soon. Um, and then, you know, I did see a comment from Carlos that what about, you know, because someone asked about, because um, someone asked what about Love and Marriage Detroit, and they said, um, and he said that an announcement should be coming very, very soon. I'm just like, oh my God. Okay, here we go. Just is what it is. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. 
But yeah, like I said, if it if it's the final season, God bless it. I think it'll hit. I think it'll give this set a huge reset, and maybe we can see who's a real content creator, who's not. And plus, not only that, it's time for something new to come to own. Anyway, it is. And y'all listen, just because somebody is saying Melody should walk off the show, does not mean they don't want Melody to do well on the show. I think at this point, it's better to be in peace than in pieces. You know what I mean? So that's just. That's just how I feel. It's just like when Candy, you know, she said, all right, I'm not coming back this year. You know, I got other projects. I just want to see what else is out there. I do think that we got to recognize that reality stars, they are human beings too. You know, they get a little, they get tired just like we do. It was everything that glitters like gold. I mean, y'all heard the pay allegedly from winter. $2,500 an episode. So, like, let's just... Let's just say that Love and Marriage Huntsville, you know, they get 15 episodes, right? So, 13 episodes, $2,500 times 13 episodes, that's $3,255, right? So, yeah, $2,500 times 13 episodes. That's that much money there. Now, of course, maybe you get three thousand five hundred dollars times two. That's seven thousand dollars. So twenty five hundred times thirteen plus plus seven thousand dollars for the two part reunion. That's thirty nine thousand five hundred dollars. I don't know anybody that actually is going to want to stay around for that. Maybe they are making that type of money in Love Marriage Huntsville. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But Winter did get the price per episode. Okay. And like I told y'all before, 90 Day Fiance, they only get $1,000 an episode at TLC. So, allegedly, 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 allegedly. So. All right, let me get the Daily Moray up for y'all, and then we'll be on out of here. Right here. Example is not the main thing in influencing others. It's, it is the only thing. Mm, it's time for the Daily Motivator for Saturday, April 13th. Opportunity to learn. The most valuable lessons are not what anyone else sees, um, what anyone else seeks to teach you. They are the lessons you learn for yourself. How do you learn those lessons? You learn by doing, by living, by experiencing you learn by making mistakes and then enjoying some progress then making bigger mistakes followed by a little more progress you learn by observing and contemplating by putting yourself on the line accepting these consequences of your actions you learn by experimenting by adjusting and adapting you learn paying close attention to what works and why even when you have no intention to learn anything there's something to be learned ask honest questions listen with care and respect and learn with what you learn, you can make real improvements to your life, your work, your world, and every moment in any situation you have the opportunity to learn, Ralph Morris. And I love this because it's so true. I think that, you know, there's a quote that says that you have to have like 10,000 hours of, um, you gotta have 10,000 hours of work um, just so you can be an expert. And nobody is an expert at anything without learning. So recognize in order to be the best, you have to learn. <laughs> Number two, the opportunity to learn does come by doing, by living and experiencing. And sometimes the biggest opportunities are the scariest ones. Do them anyway. Do them anyway. You know, they always say public speaking is the biggest fear of a lot of people. But do you know what would happen if you opened up your mouth, if you had something good to say? You never know who you can inspire. There are people that, you know, they work at men's warehouse. There are people that work at um, bad dress, um, at, at, um, at wedding bridal salons, right? Sometimes the opportunity comes through your job to learn. Sometimes it comes through your family. Sometimes it comes through your friends. So recognize the opportunities to learn from what you can do comes from the opportunities that are around you 
And finally, too, what I would say to this, listen with care and respect. That's something we don't do enough around here. We don't care. We don't respect. And we have to get past the fact that just because someone has an opinion means that they're a horrible person. Because that's the case. Everybody is a horrible person. If that's the case. Nobody should have an opinion. Okay, well, listen, let me shut down this laptop. You shut down your laptop. Let the world shut down with their opinions. And let's see where we are. <laughs> like I said, we always want a forward-thinking society, but yet we want to stay comfortable in our own thinking. That's never going to work. So, Well, y'all, with that being said, that is our show for this evening. Um, I thank all of you so much for hanging with me for a late, late night edition um, a virtual tour live. I'm sorry that wasn't here on time. So I will t- I will I will gladly take the the L on that one. Um, but for those of you who did still come through, thank you all so so much. Of course, you guys will be able to catch the replay. Um, I hope you guys do enjoy the replay. So with that being said, it's time for the best outro on YouTube. Know what you do and do what you know. Never say you want more special because you always want a blessing and trust. You may not be where you want to be, but by the end of it, you'll be where you need to be. Do what you've been chosen. Why is one thing to call yourself? It's nothing you've been chosen. One love, much love, all love. I have spent time with you. You have spent time with me. Hopefully, I spent time together. We're going to be great together. And I always remember we're doing radio, television, YouTube, living your best life, or you're just pouring out the hey, listen, congratulations on the big news, Margot Robbie. But what about Kevin Hart, too, huh? Just if one, if something's happening, y'all, do your research. Okay, because there might have been another story developing that you guys may not have known about. Make sure the replay is not just worth you watch it, not just worth you listen to it, but for you want to experience it again. I love you. I value you. I embrace you all. Always remember or receive love. You got to give it or receive love. You got to give it or receive love. You got to give it. Whatever obstacles you ever overcome, whatever success you have achieved on this particular day, I am extremely proud of you, but no one else is proud of you. Be proud of your damn self. And finally, y'all, <sighs> my Lord, if you always sleep, you probably need to sleep. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? To be honest with you, like I totally understand now why some people are just they are the way they are. Like as I am getting older, I recognize I love being to myself of myself and by myself. I love peace. I love sandy. I love my space not being of confusion. And hopefully you love your space and not so with that being said i'm gonna give y'all a commercial break and fireworks with that being said good night everybody um i think sunday we're gonna be doing sassy's court uh, with myself sassy tv from the al3 um Teresa and little paulette i think we're supposed to be doing colorism so i'll be back here sunday night at i think 7 p.m so um yeah one love much love all love i feel the love it's in the way back to you commercial break fireworks and then i am i'll enjoy the fireworks for the day for the day that was for the day that's coming for the blessings our own way for all of us as a people as a society and as a culture i feel the love that's the right to you good night everybody These singles have finally met the one. I want to get on with my life, and I want you in it. But never in person. After 12 years, Josh and I have never met. What if we don't click in real life? Until now. Seven couples will put their virtual connections to the test. You'll be living with your person. But will reality mean true romance? We have a beautiful <laughs> love story. The Never Ever Met. New series, Friday, April 19th, 8, 7 Central, and stream on Max. Me and Cindia have not met in person yet for various reasons. The sexual tension is on a hundred, a thousand, a million. I like Brandon and I, our relationship, our chemistry online, but to me, real chemistry is in the air when you're around someone. Really, physically is everything I expected, and then some, absolutely. She's fire. You know, I can't tell her that because, you know, she- Women like men to play hard to get, so. The sexual chemistry is strong. My first impression, like, damn, 
he fine as hell. <laughs> I'm just glad to, to get the meeting part out the way, which is something we, that's been, we've been dodging, I guess, for, say, for so many years. I know it's going to be an attraction there. I just want to make sure that he is going to be the right guy for me. At this point, Joanna and I have had a net rider now because I booked a flight and I lost my ID. It's a new morning for America's family. Sun's coming up, so make it all that it can be. You know what I have been through. I'm Harry Schmidt. I'm Julie Chen. I'm Maggie Rodriguez. Morning everywhere. Come on, get up. I'm Russ Mitchell. And I'm Dave Price. And it's a little early for this. Now this It's a new one for America's family. Sun's coming up, so make it all that it can be. You know I got help in turn. Every day is good when you start to get up right. But I would have been a We have an early show exclusive. Yes. <laughs> a lot happens early. Early. Dirty. Early. early. A lot. A lot. A lot happens early. The Early Show, weekday mornings on CBS. It's a new morning. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile. Somewhere to help me get in the know. Oh, wait. There is. Bring your friends. Good morning, America. GMA 7A. Now that's how you start your day. Hey, grab me one, too. Success. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation of triumph. Ding, ding, ding. This is oh, I can feel it. This season, everyone gets the winning feeling. Win guaranteed prizes like 250 grand and more. Only at Dave and Buster's. Ding, ding, ding. Things have been a little quiet around here. We've missed the fun. We've missed the excitement. We've missed the entertainment. We've missed the nightlife. But most of all. We've missed you. We're getting with Caesar's rewards. We can't wait to welcome you back. This is for all you multi-talented, multitasking, multi-everything people out there. Take it away. Yourself. <laughs> no applause. <laughs> You're all fired. <laughs> now that you've reached the stage in your life where quality television is important, Nubian TV is a black network that speaks to your lifestyle. Nubian TV is the world's first digital network devoted to the upscale and political lifestyles of black people. Nubian TV's programming includes politics, travel, fashion, food, automotive, arts and culture, civil rights, music, and more. Watch now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, or watch globally at NubianTV.net. Nubian TV, it's what you want to watch. Now that you... Caesar. Just look at him. Well, the 
competition. General. Author. Ruler. Man. Legend has it, he's not only stared into the belly of the beast, he's had it for dinner. Here he's free to relax, or party, or relax, or party, or relax, and party. His is a world of opulence. And the occasional impulse buy. Not one to rest on his laurels, he's famous for ushering in a new age of entertainment. So, for anyone seeking a place where the sun never sets on a good time, all this awaits. I am Caesar, and I approve this palace. <laughs> 